the commitment by member states to the global compact for safe, orderly and regular migration crystallized three core truths. First, that migration is a fact of life, a defining feature of humanity and our world, and above all, with a positive phenomenon enriching societies and economies. The UN Secretary General went on to say that secondly, migration, if poorly managed, would bring from tragic loss of life to rights violations and social tensions. And that thirdly, effective management of migration and protection of the rights of all migrants would require increased international cooperation. The current situation in Ukraine has put even more focus on this issue, which has already been in the spotlight in the past. Migration, refugees. Refugees, asylum seekers, migrants. These three categories that are often mixed, partly because of ignorance, but also because many of the people concerned, due to their respective individual circumstances, change from one status to another. Due to the dominance of the Ukraine conflict, refugees from other countries of the world have largely disappeared from the headlines. In our weekly programs we always talk to experts recognized experts from the UN, religious organizations and the Holy See. In this issue, however, I am not talking to an expert on the subject, but to someone who lives what experts talk about, a person concerned, the young Syrian Abdal Karem. Abdal is a war refugee from Syria. Duty and act of charity, refugee hate. Now here on EWTN TV UN Block. Good day. No, you have not landed on Sports TV, but you're still watching EWTN TV. Our guest today in action. He is a competitive wrestler for ASV Mainz 88. Abdal Karem was once a Bundesliga national team athlete in Syria. And after fleeing his country to Germany with the help of the Order of Malta, the Athletic Sportvereinigung Mainz 1888, ASV Mainz 88, a German wrestling club, has welcomed him with open arms. Above the roofs of Mainz, I now greet Abdal Karem. Greetings, Abdal. Abdal, war was the reason why you left your home country and fled to Germany. Ich habe mir alles äh, aufgeschrieben, wenn ich darf, äh, damit ich nichts vergesse und auch keine Fehler mache. Also lese ich jetzt vor. The reason that made me leave my country was the war that broke out in Syria. I did not flee because of hunger or poverty or because I was looking for wealth. The war leaves no one out, old or young or rich or poor. We fled because we were looking for security we lost in our country. The decision to immigrate was not a difficult one, but a very easy one. We knew that we might not be able to return to our country and never see our family again. Nevertheless, it was easy for me. Unfortunately, in connection with migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, in Germany exists a tendency to xenophobia. Have you ever been a target of racism or hostility yourself? I have not had to deal with xenophobia or racism myself. Maybe because of my size and strength. In addition, I am a martial artist. I already visually inspire respect in people. 
Maybe many don't dare to say something openly. Sometimes I see that people look at me differently or observe me. But I personally have never been attacked or insulted because of my ethnicity or appearance. In your opinion, what exact reasons do people have to be hostile and, and racist towards migrants? I think there are many individual reasons for this. A major role is certainly played by the different emphasis and practices of religion. Germany and the Arab countries differ in many respects. In addition, there are many differences in the complete way of life, culture and attitudes to life. I think that these differences cause many different feelings on both sides. Many are afraid of the unknown or dislike foreign things. Sometimes it may simply be disinterest. Abdal, you just mentioned religion. You are a Muslim. In your opinion, is the statement Islam belongs to Germany okay? How do you see that? In my opinion, the sentence Islam belongs to Germany can be said in this way. Many Germans I have met do not have anything to do with their religion, not even with Christianity. They have their own rules or their own references to God even, if they believe in him at all. Every religion has to be accepted and to be tolerated from all sides. Islam is very tolerated here in Germany. And yes, I do see my religion as part of this country. Surely it depends on many factors how to integrate migrants to their advantage so that they are recognized by society as equals. In my opinion, it depends on the reason uh, for which the migrants came to Germany. There are war refugees, but there are also economically interested people or people who are simply upset with their country. For us migrants, it is very important to show our culture and religion in a good light and to show the good side. The basis for this is respect. Unfortunately, there are also people who represent our culture very badly and aggressively and show themselves very disrespectful. But I think there are those everywhere. I think whoever really wants to integrate will find many ways to do that Those who don't want to will always find a reason not to integrate. Of course, the same is true for Germans. Those who don't want migrants in their lives will not help them or support them. It is based on reciprocity. Most people have never had personal contact with migrants, and yet they judge and condemn them. Shouldn't we therefore seek dialogue, contact? Because in the end, this helps both the migrants and the locals. When I came first to Germany, I was able to make many new contacts very quickly. Many people wanted to talk to me. Many were very curious and interested. That did me a lot of good and helped me to become more confident and outgoing over time. In addition, I learned the language better. You are an athlete, a sportsman. To what extent can the values and norms of sport be used against xenophobia and how important is sport in general for international understanding? In my opinion, sport is a very big factor for international understanding. In sports, it doesn't matter who is on the playing field or in the fighting ring. It doesn't matter what the person looks like how they speak or what religion they belong to. It's the sport and only the sport that counts. 
This attitude says a lot about the person himself. Sport unites people from all countries and cultures. Racism has no place or meaning here. Abdallah currently earns his living as a ticket inspector, controller, for Mainzer Mobilität, a company of the Mainzer Stadtwerke. We thank Abdal for the time he took to study and answer my questions. And what the fans of wrestling may be interested in, Abdal told me that he has already signed a contract with ASV Mainz 88 for the new season. We wish him good luck in the upcoming tournaments. A quick note, starting next week from March 14th to 27th, the International Weeks Against Racism will take place. The motto, show attitude. The Foundation Against Racism organizes this initiative in cooperation with the Federal Government Commissioner for Migration, Refugees and Integration and Federal Government Commissioner for Anti-Racism, Minister of State to the Chancellor and Member of Parliament, Reem Alabali Radovan. In the press release of the Foundation Against Racism, it reads, let's make ourselves strong together for a cosmopolitan, diverse and vibrant society and show attitude against racism. We pray and hope that anti-racism, especially in these days, refers to all people, no matter what descent, origin or clan. We must not be upset by their numbers, but rather see them as persons, look them in the face, listen to their stories and try as best as we can to respond to their situation. This is an excerpt from Pope Francis's address to the US Congress in September 2015. Finally, I believe especially during Lent, but also actually always, an important note from Pope Francis during his Angelus prayer on February 27th this year. In the Gospel of today's liturgy, Jesus invites us to reflect on how we see and speak about others gaze and words. First of all, our gaze. The danger, says the Lord, is that we focus on seeing the mote in our brother's eye but fail to notice the beam in our own eye. In other words, we pay very close attention to the faults of others, even the smallest ones but we tend to overlook our own faults, attaching little importance to them. Jesus is right when he says, we always find reasons to blame others and justify ourselves.